All right, so we're going to talk about setting up WAMP, WAMP server. WAMP server will create a virtual server on your computer. Uh, so as my instructions say, over on the website wampserver.com, this is where you would download the software if you've got Windows. On, on the Mac, you've got your own instructions that will download uh, MAMP. And basically what that is, but well, once you go here you might see oh, this is in French, so you want to select on the top right English. This is, the, this is the WAMP software and there's a download button. It's all in my instructions. But what I want to show you here is that this is the software that will create a virtual server on your computer. Uh, WAMP stands for Windows uh, Apache MySQL PHP. You don't need to know what it stands for, but these are the web technologies that are behind the most popular websites. So when you visit this website or Facebook or YouTube or whatever, there's technology in the, back, in the background that lets it all run. And that's what we're doing here. We're downloading Apache PHP MySQL for Windows. We're going to create a virtual server. And then we're going to install WordPress onto it. Um, if you go to your desktop, on these computers, there's already an icon there, a little purple icon that says Start WAMP Server. So double-click that. You might not see much of a result, so don't click it and click it and click it. What happens is, you might see this. You might see a little W appear on the bottom here, or it may disappear. If it disappears, it hides itself under those little, that little double arrow. So after you double-click WAMP server, you should get a little W, and if it disappears, check inside of the double arrow. You see a little W. When you first load WAMP server, it's, it'll be red, because it's loading up, and then orange, and then green. Mine is green. If it's not green, then there could be some troubleshooting that we need to do. So, this is obviously the first step, very important. Did this work for everyone? Raise your hand if you've got a green W. Okay, raise your hand if you need a little help. So all you need to do is make sure that you've got this green W here. Like I said, you don't get any feedback that says WAMP server running or anything. You just get a green W. If you get an orange one, I think we'll be okay. We'll see in the next step. If you get a red W, that's not good. That means something is wrong. And that's why I've got these troubleshooting steps here that might fix it. So if this is all working properly at home, you install WAMP server, you double click the WAMP icon, and you get this W. That's all we need for the moment. What's happening in the background is now there's a virtual server running on this computer. We can install a website into it. 
The thing is, though, that no one else will be able to see that website. It's not live on the internet. It's only accessible from this computer. So when you go home, you would need to set this up at home. You would need to download web server at home. Uh, so what we need to do, my instructions here go into detail, which I've skipped a lot because this assumes you're going to start it from scratch. Download WAM server, install it, set your mail uh, option. Don't need to do it. It's already done for us. Um, number number three, uh, what we can do here, if you see the little W, click on it, and at the top, select localhost. What that should do is load up the default web browser, in this case Firefox, and you should see a screen that looks like this, web server, server configuration, and a bunch of options. Did that work for you? Okay, so if you see this, we're, we're on our way. This is showing that, yes, we have a virtual server. All right, so what we're looking at here is the WAMP server configuration. And again, you might think, well, I just want to sell products. You will, but you'll also have to deal with some of this setup. Uh, <laughs> if we bought some server space at GoDaddy, for example, I'll mention a variety of companies where you can do this. GoDaddy is a big one. GoDaddy.com. There's also Bluehost. Bluehost.com. They'll all sell you two things. One is the server space, which is where you upload all your stuff to, all your products, all your text, where you set up WordPress. And the other is the domain name, which is your .com, right? Victorsbakery.com or paintingsbyvictor.net. So you need the domain name and the hosting, and any of these companies will sell it to you. Uh, and then when you get an account with GoDaddy, for example, you log into the control panel and there's a button that says Install WordPress. And then it installs WordPress and you've got a brand new WordPress site. Again, in, o in order to do that, you need to pay GoDaddy $70 a year. We're doing it this way where we've got a virtual server, but we're going to need a little bit more setup than just a one-click installation. That's why my instructions are all here, step by step. This is sheet number two now. Sheet number one is download WAMP, in, install it, start it. Sheet number two, we need to set up WordPress. WordPress will live on this virtual server, and it'll be a real website. It's just that no one will be able to access it from any other computer. Um, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you step one of sheet number two is if you go to wordpress.org, this is where you would go to select download WordPress. It's already done for us here, so you don't need to do it. But at home, you would go to wordpress.org, and you would select to download, and it would download the WordPress software. And it's free. You download it and you use it. But the way you use it is to install it to a server. That's what WAMP server is. And actually, um, my 
sheet is slightly out of date because they just released WordPress 4.0 yesterday. So don't be scared if my sheet tells you download WordPress 3.9.2. Then it download 4.0, the newest one. At home, you don't need to do it here. What this does is it downloads a zip file, a compressed folder, because a WordPress, the WordPress software is made up of like a hundred pieces of uh, code, and all of that is compressed into a zip file. You download it, you unzip it, just follow my instructions, it's all done for you here. And what we need to do is uh, go back to your desktop, go to the computer, open the local disk C, open the C drive, you're going to see two things. There's a folder, WAMP, because WAMP was installed already for us, there's the WAMP folder. When you do this at home, you're going to have a WAMP folder after you install. And then the technician has already gone in and downloaded WordPress, uh, WordPress for us. There it is there, WordPress. Now, uh, the technician can't update the software every week, so if you go to WordPress and open that folder, we have WordPress 3.9.1. So it's two versions, two small versions behind the current one, 4.0, but don't worry. So all of the WordPress software is right here. What we need to do, according to my instructions, is copy that into the WAMP folder, because the WAMP folder is what, whole, is what makes the website live. So here's how I will do it. Um, inside the WordPress folder, you'll see WordPress 391. Right-click it, copy, go back to the local disk C. You should see the WAMP folder, open that folder, and then you'll see a www folder, open that folder. And then you're going to right click and paste. Okay, so right now I'm on step number, sheet number two, step number three, I'm sorry, step number one. So I got it. Um, Copy and copy. Yes, if you do this at home with version four point oh, um, from what I've read, it's not radically different. So there shouldn't be any incompatibilities. Just bug fixes and updates and such. All right. So did everyone copy the WordPress software into the WW folder? Yes. All right. So um, what we've done is we've uh, whatever we put into this WWW folder will be a website. And actually, if you notice here index.php is what is being displayed here. This home screen here is this index.php file, so don't change it, don't delete it, or don't do anything to it. This is the WAMP home page. What we've done is we've put a WordPress, we've put the WordPress software into the WW folder, therefore it's a website now. And uh, this is optional, but I recommend it. Right now the folder is called WordPress-3.9.1. Let's change the name of that folder so that it simply says WordPress. So that's what my step one here was saying, sub-step E. You're going to open the folder, copy the WordPress folder into WW, etc. We're on step two now. 
So go back to the full. Uh, go back to the Firefox. Go back to the website so that you can see WAMP server right here. Yes. As long as you've got WordPress in the WW folder, you'll be okay. Now, this screen here, we're in the web browser, and notice that the address is localhost. It's not localhost.com or .net or whatever. It's not mywebsite.com. It's localhost. So whenever we want to get back to this in the future, if we just go to the address on your web browser, localhost, that'll connect back to the web server home page. And what we want to do here is we want to create a database. WordPress is a modern uh, software for making websites. It's known as a CMS, Content Management System, CMS, which means that it will manage all of your content. It'll manage your pictures and text and products and clients and all of that. This is in contrast to classic web design where you had to manage every aspect of your site. You had to create a folder and put the clients in there. You had to create a products page and then put products into it and then a products folder and then a subfolder. You had to manage the whole site the old way, the old days. Then uh, the new days with WordPress and others of its ilk, you just use WordPress and it will do the stuff in the background for you. But in order for that to work, it needs a database to keep track of everything. Your pictures, your text, your products, etc. So we're about to create a database so that the WordPress that we just put into the folder can connect to the database and then work. So here on the WAMP server screen on localhost, at the bottom, tools, we have PHP MyAdmin. This is my step two here. Click on PHP MyAdmin. And then the address changes to localhost slash phpmyadmin with some stuff. But um, this is the screen where we're going to create a database so that we can continue to install WordPress. Now again, if you bought GoDaddy, there's going to be a button that says install WordPress, and it'll do all of this for you. But that costs $70 a year. I'm not asking you to buy that. We're going to do it honestly the hard way. But once you have this set up the first time, smooth sailing. Are you aware of the message we have in the pink banner there about the configuration at the bottom? Nope. Where? Your configuration file contains settings that correspond to the default MYSQL. We're not going to worry about that. So in this screen here, um, at the top, my instructions say we're going to go to uh, databases up on top here. There's a spot here that says create a database, and we will call this database WordPress. So type WordPress there and then select create. So does that mean you have to do exactly the name of the folder? Is that why we took the version? Off of it, or is this not no, actually, this can be called anything. It can be called Kitty. We can have any database here, and then we're going to connect the WordPress um, folder to it. I'm just using the same name to kind of keep it all straight in my head. So uh, WordPress, and I'm going to select to create. And it should pop up here that says database has been created. If it goes away, just take a peek on the left side here. We should have a brand new database that says WordPress. So don't try to do it more than once. It'll give you an error. You want to create the database and you'll see it on the left. Question? What's that? Okay, just one moment. So uh, what we're doing again? This is what this is why the uh, 
the server developers get paid the big bucks, which is why they're angry all the time. Because uh, <laughs> this stuff is complicated. But I would just delete that message if you can, because you've got it here and you've got it here, and that's for the seven people. All right, so this is a crucial step because WordPress needs to take care of a lot of information, and all of the information is going to be safe right here. Question? Can you make turtle by accident? Make a big one? Just ignore it for the moment. As long as you've got one that's called WordPress, like that, you'll be fine. All right, so um, we've got the database. We put the WordPress software into the www folder. Now we need to connect the two. So on your web browser, let's go back to localhost. Just type localhost. If you want to get used to, if you lose any of this, you want to get used to go back to your web browser and just type localhost, not .com, just localhost. That should take you back to the WAMP home screen. So that's how we can always get back to it. Notice also on my sheets I've written, you can go to localhost slash whatever. It's all here. So what you should see is now, at the bottom where it says your projects, there's WordPress. That wasn't there before. If you, if you left the name WordPress 391, it'll say that, and that's fine. But it's just showing you here, these are your projects, these are your websites. So any folder that you create in the WW folder will be a new website, a new project. So just an example, you don't have to do this. Let's say I had a folder here called cats. If I was in WAMP now, I've got a project, cats. So I can have multiple WordPress installations. 
I can work with multiple WordPress sites. I just put, I just separate them into their own folders. So I can copy the WordPress folder again in here and call it something else, and then I've got a different WordPress site. It will need a different database, however. So each WordPress folder needs its own database. You can call them whatever you want. So it doesn't show up there? Does it show what? If it didn't show up, try this. Try to do a refresh, because it should show up. If you put your WordPress folder in the right folder, it should show up down here. Question? When you say it needs its own database, so Cats and WordPress would be two separate websites? Yes. Cats would be its own website with its own database, which I haven't created yet. And WordPress is its own website with its own database, the one we just made. So if I wanted a cats site, I would go back to phpMyAdmin and create a database called cats. Okay, I'll help you in just one moment. So if you've got your WordPress folder here, go ahead and click on it. And what should happen is... What should happen is that we should get a screen that loads up, but I think I know what's going to go wrong here. Um, this at a this might eventually it's trying to connect and then it might not connect. But my answer is like I've written right here. Let's I'm going to cancel that. Press escape. What I'm going to do is type manually localhost slash WordPress. It's supposed to work that you just click WordPress and it goes to that address. If it doesn't go to that address, then we'll type it ourselves. That's why I wrote it here. We've got a folder that we created called WordPress. So it makes sense that we type localhost slash the name of the folder, WordPress. All right, did you get a screen that says um, there doesn't appear to be a WP config file? Yep. There's an error here, but don't worry about that. <laughs> We're still setting it up. So on this screen, it's basically saying, OK, you're trying to access your WordPress site. It's not even installed yet. Error. Well, we're about to install it, as per my next steps here. Uh, click Create Configuration File button. It's saying, in order to proceed, you're going to need a database name, username, password, host. And we have all of that. So let's click Let's Go. So here, it says, type the name of your database. We just made a database called WordPress, so that's done. If we had made a database called Cats, then we would call it Cats, right? So WordPress is done. On my notes here, on step 3, sub step D, it says, username, change that to root, lowercase, no quotation marks. Here's the thing. Uh, WAMP was installed and it has a default user, the root user. Uh, this is asking, what's the name of the user to connect to the database? And we never had to type it, but I'm telling you what it is. It's root, lowercase. Password is no password. Delete that. There's no password there. Not even a space. Don't put a space there, because the space is actually a character. Make sure there's nothing there under password. That's sub-step E. Database host is localhost. That's what we've been typing at the top here, localhost. So that's fine. And table prefix will leave the default. The database will be full of WordPress content, so it'll have a prefix of WP. That's fine. So just to confirm, you should have here database name WordPress. Username is root, lowercase. Password is nothing. And host and table prefix are defaults. Select Submit. I should say, all right, Sparky, you've made it this far. Run the install. So it's always going to be root for every single site that you create? For every single site that we create via this process of using WAMP server. If you're on the Mac, there's slightly different instructions there. Check what the username. It might be admin. All right, 
So you should see a welcome screen. Welcome to the famous five-minute WordPress installation. It's been more than five minutes, but um, it's five minutes if you buy GoDaddy and click the button and install. Because at GoDaddy, it would have already done all of this for us. Set up a server, set up a database. It would take us to this point. But since we are our own administrators, we have to do every step. And obviously not hard, just a lot of detail. Here is where you decide to set up your site. Uh, you can um, invent a site. You can plug in the details of your existing site. It doesn't matter because, again, this is not going to take over your existing site. It's only going to live on this virtual server. So I'm going to make up a site. And again, I recommend just make up a site, learn this stuff, and once you're a little bit better at it, then do it to your real site. But I'm going to make up a site called Victor's Bakery. So my other passion is cooking, which is different than baking, but we'll say Victor's Bakery. And then here, it's asking us to create a login and a password. On my previous steps here, I said the username is root and the password is blank. That's only relevant to the database, and that's only relevant when we're installing this. This username and password is the one that you would be using to log into WordPress to add a new picture or a product. We never have to touch the database anymore now. We only need to log into WordPress. So this can be anything you want. My uh, instructions here recommend just to type admin. This is step three, sub step G. Password, anything you want. If it says it's a weak password, don't worry about it, but I do recommend to have a strong password, which usually means capital letters and numbers and all of that stuff. Uh, type in your email address. If you forget your password, this is a way to retrieve your your e uh, your password. Uh, and it's this is going to be your administrator email. So type your email address. And since this site is not going to exist for real on the internet, I'm going to turn off this option allow search engines to index the site which means don't let the search engines pay attention to this site don't let Google find it don't let Yahoo find it and it, it makes sense because this is not a real site on the internet yet later on we do want to turn this back on once our site is on the internet we want the search engines to find it and at the moment we don't need that so this always happens, and it seems to um, just be a little bit of bad luck. But remember, write this stuff down. Don't think you might memorize it. Admin is the username, and then make sure you save your password. Yes. Uh, before we get too far, I'm, I'm really lost on this. So the, it, it never gave me uh, confirmation on the original um, projects. The original. Yeah, the, that message at the bottom for the council and the project. You want this for Okay, we're going to get to a, a big break soon, so I'll help you out a bit more there. Um, but at this point, select install WordPress. And then this says, or it should say, WordPress has been installed. Your username is that admin. And then your password should be the one that you just made. This is not the same one from earlier that it was root with a blank password. This is the one you just made right now. So select login. And then username and password. That's the one we just made, which was admin plus your password. I don't know what your password is. It was your password. Select login.
Okay, so we'll take a break in a moment, but uh, this is WordPress. This is the WordPress dashboard. This is the WordPress software. It's free. We're using it. It's just that now we need to understand what these screens do, how to add content, manage our pictures, and all of that. So the whole point of this first month is setting up WordPress and starting to get acclimated to using it. The second month is, that's when we'll get into the, the e-commerce features. Uh, but there's still a lot to learn before we get to that point. Um, what I've got here is the, the dashboard, and we need to get used to the concept of, of editing the site in the dashboard and then viewing the results in the, in the live site. So um, at the top left, it should show you the name of your website, and if you hover your mouse over it, it should give you the option Visit Site. So this is what it looks like only to me as an administrator. How does it look like to regular people? Go up to Visit Site, click on it. What's that? Don't select to update WordPress. Um, so here is the front end. So I'm going to use these terms, back end, front end. The front end is, the, is this part that regular people will see, your customers will see. The back end is the dashboard where <laughs> you control things. To get back to the dashboard, back to the back end, you roll over the name of your site again, you go to dashboard. So there might be a notice about updating WordPress. Don't do it just yet. You might have some other update notifications here. Don't worry about that yet. We'll talk about all of this in detail. But right now, after all of this hard work, now we've got a basic WordPress installation. There's still a lot to do here, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a break. What I recommend during the break is if you haven't had a chance to print these out, print out sheets 1, 2, and 3. and um, on sheet number two, take a look at these last steps on number four. Try those for a moment. We'll do it together after the break. But at this point, we've got a WordPress site. And when we come back, we'll start to look at what, what can we do with it. So let's take a break 10 minutes until 11.10.